My poem is called Twin Hills. It draws on an ancient Irish story intended to explain why the Ulstermen were not available on the day of the great battle with their enemies from Connaught. It seems they had been debilitated, uh, incapacitated, cursed. So here's the story, the backstory of uh, what came up to that day. Twin Hills. There is a Gaelic story told old ago, told when old ago was not so old. It is about the whitening woman, the territorial queen, the everlasting beauty whose lips conferred the summer haven dream. It tells of how she went woodwalking early one ancient day, and when she came upon a clearing where a lonely man lived tilling his field, and how he looked mighty fine to her, where he worked to the terracing, stripped in the sunning to the waist, his bronze back rippling with muscled hammocks moving like living rings of snakes. And the lady who then emerges from out inside her mystery thicket, walking to where the man had cows, speaking no words, but only pulling on the udders until she makes the milk cows mild. Then how she shapes shelter sides and rounding the rough house boards, performing the straightening and generally working through the day, helping the man whose echo she heard inside her own quilted body sense, until it was time to lead him to her, until time came for loving in the straw, just the feeling and the flood, the touch of two in yellow straw. Then she who leads her farmer to prosper, leading him by the hand, leading the land to black fertility, while she herself, the whitening woman, made big with twins in her belly. And it's how they kept together, fitting that well around each other, and how they combed through the timely tale of two planetary lovers. Or until there came the day, the news, of a New Year's festival day, with the farmer summoned by the king, called upon since the region of the king would be renewed by the up-from-under mothers. And he who now will celebrate the lease on life granted him. So they're coming the day, set for the gaming, the bard words, and the drink, with the farmer man ready to leave, and his lady who wishes he would stay since she says he will want to boast of her, and this would not be best. But still the landholder, feeling certain, sure, he can rub against the hero company, and never telling the tales of her. And so he goes. With the morning comes the noon, and with the sun bulging at its brightest, there come the hero games when the king must bring the chariot with two horses, saying no one can run faster than they. And when the farmer must boast of his lady as finally having recognized the silver threads of sovereignty while saying she can win any race run. And when the farmer must be tied, so told he will die unless his lady does outrun the sun. Then the king's men sent to summons her, and she being told her lover's life is lost, if she does not lead the solar horses. But being as carefully near as she is to the fullness of her term, she naturally asks for small mercy, with it not near enough for messengers to give her. And her farmer man, in addition, they say, who will soon see the shallow grave of an only man's death. So then the lady goes to the games, and once again asking now of the assembled to be shown a margin of mercy. But still those heroes 
who cannot hear her, and she who races in the outside rim, outrunning the solar twins, while reaching to the finish line and just in time to birth the pair of holy hills in hard pain in kneeling labor, while still the heroes gathered, the king's company looks on. And maybe she's through with men by then, the whitening woman who once loved a farmer, since when she slowly stands in her afterbirth, she tells of what is in store for them. She only sang, Such indifferent heroes deserve to feel the pangs of birth, and so ye will whenever the region is pressed in deepest danger, and fully for five days incapacitated with the bending pains of kneeling labor. And after plainly saying what she feels, the whitening woman turns away and wraps herself inside her cloak, with no one telling if she looks a last time down the twilight tide towards her lover, she who hides in breasty hillsides. And it's just an old story told old ago, when fields kept to smaller clearings and trees spread in wider groves, mostly forgotten except in books, mostly forgotten except for near events. And how about that simple farmer? Still lonely, likely, and no wiser.